Hello, and welcome to Cox Reels Tech Tips. Today we're standing on one of Cox Reels assembly lines and we're gonna be talking about changing out the ratcheting pawl spring, also known as the locking dog spring. And what that spring does is it activates the mechanism that stops the reel from rewinding when you're gonna be doing your work, right? So you hear it click, it stops the reel. It's located on the back side of the reel under the pedestal in this very small area here, hence why we're making the video. I'm gonna show you on these two pedestals right here because it's a little open, but I'll show you how to do it like this without taking the whole reel apart, okay? All right. So over here, we have the pedestals with the discs removed so that we can see what we're doing. This one right here represents the T-Series and the SH-Series, the Super Hub, and it is the 19 and 24 inch reels. The smaller reels, or the P-Series reels, are 13 and 17 inch, and they use this system. The only difference between them is how the spring attaches opposite the locking dog. So on this one, it uses a bent metal tab with a hole in it, and on this one, and it uses a stud. Other than that, the process is gonna be exactly the same for both of these reels, okay? Now, here's how the actual mechanism works inside the reel in the back. As you're pulling your hose out, it makes the ratchet sound that you hear, and then it stops and locks it in place, right? Now, if this spring breaks on you, Then of course, there's nothing to stop the reel from rewinding, so the reel just continues to rewind, okay? When this happens, all we have to do is replace this little spring and you're back up and running. Now, the easiest way to do this is to remove this part. You can argue and fight with it and use something like hemostats or some kind of needle nose pliers and try to stretch the spring, but we want to avoid people doing that because there's a chance that you can actually damage the spring, which would then lead to another failure down the road. So the method we're gonna show you here is the most foolproof method for putting the spring on without doing any damage to it, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this assembly, put the springs on it, and then slide the assembly back in. Now the whole time I demo this, I'm gonna demo it as if the whole disc was here, right? So we're only using our fingers, no thumbs, and we're doing all our work like this, okay? All right, now before I get started, I wanna show you a couple of things. First, this assembly. And in case this falls apart on you, I just want you to know how it goes. So the first piece is a spacer. The second piece is the locking dog itself. Then you have a little plastic washer and then the bolt, okay? And when you put all these things together, so you're gonna have plastic spacer, washer, and then the spacer. Now, the right way to have this is that when this is pointing up at the axle, right? Your reel could be sideways. When this is pointing at the axle, your little spring hook is pointing towards the middle of the reel, okay? If you put it on backwards, just flip it around. All right. Now, the second thing I wanna talk about is this little spring. So this little spring, I know it's hard to see here, but the little spring has 90 degree opposite ends, okay? So one is bent like this and the other one is 90 degrees opposite to it. What is important is that when you install this and you're finished with your installation, it's resting in this natural state. You don't wanna be twisting this or preloading it in its state when you're putting it on, right? So. It doesn't really matter whether you put this hook up or this hook down or any of that, but what it does matter is that when you put this assembly together and it's sitting on the reel, okay, it's in it, it's naturally sitting the way that it is and you're not, for example, pre-twisting it like this, right? Or pre-twisting it like this. So what that means is, all you have to do is pay attention to how this is oriented when you're putting your spring together back here, right? If it ends up like this before you put the bolt in, you need to flip the spring around. Okay, let's talk about how we're gonna do this. So, 
I'll demo on the T-Series first. The T-Series is actually easier to do because this bracket is smaller, so you have a lot more room to work in here. The P-Series is a bit trickier because there's less room, but it's the same process, okay? So on this reel, first off, you can't have this in the way of where the pawl goes, right? So your disc has to be rotated such that you have the room to work here. If for some reason you are in this position, you need to either move the ball stop, pull the hose out, have someone hold it for you, tie a knot in the hose, something to get it like this, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this nut. So that's gonna be a 5 8 wrench, 9 16 wrench. So we will reach around without using our thumbs, hold with the 5 8 and undo our hardware with the 9 16 in the back. Get it loose. Take our nut off. Okay, and then we're gonna remove our hardware assembly. Okay, so now that I have this off, we're gonna pretend that this was broken, right? And we're gonna replace it with our new spring. So it doesn't really matter which way you put it on, like I said initially, but I do find it easier to have this pointing down rather than up. And it's because when you're putting it on, this metal tab, especially on the T-Series, you really need to have the spring pointing straight up and down so that you can slide it on there, then it falls in and you can twist it out, right? And so that's a, a lot easier to do this way than it is upside down. Okay, so we grab our part like this, no thumbs, remember? And we're going to slide it over like this and hold it in place so that I can move it around like this, see that? Okay, again, hold it like this and slide it on. And then with the other two fingers, we're gonna work this up, slide it over the top. Try to fish it into that little hole and then straighten it out. Now, once I have it like this, the point is, is to basically put this bolt back in here, right? So we're sitting there like this. We put the bolt back through, and now it's a handy little thing. Once your spring is back in place, it'll just hold your bolt like that, and you can go ahead and put your hardware on the back. So we've got our lock washer, and then we've got our nuts. in place, tighten it down, put our wrench on, and torque the reel down, and we're back in action, right? Reel is fixed. Now let's take a look at it on the P-Series, which, I, like I said, is a little bit harder because if you imagine the P-Series, which looks like this, much less room to work here because you don't have this super hub space. All right, so slide these out of the way. Put our P-Series on here. Same kind of scenario. We're reaching around to get this, but because it doesn't have the super hub, our nut's just on the back side. So it's a little easier that way. If you're struggling with this and you're having a hard time fishing with your fingers and you wanna make a little more room, especially on the P-Series reel, what you can do is watch how to change a spring can tech tip and remember that you remove this swivel and then you can undo the snap ring. And once the snap ring is off, you can kind of push this and make a little more room in here. Now you don't wanna push it so much that this whole thing falls off, otherwise you gotta put it all back on, but you can slide it off a good inch or so, so that you've got more room back here to work, okay? And that concludes our video. I do wanna stress again, remember the only important thing about this is that that spring stays in its neutral position, right? So don't get it twisted before you put it together or as you're putting it together. Other than that, that's all there is to it. We hope you get your reel back up and running as fast as you can. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, have a wonderful day.